Okay, last time I showed you what a logical circuit is, and I showed you how to write down the input-output table for a logical circuit, and I also showed you how to write down a logical expression or a Boolean expression for a logical circuit. Today I want to cover the converse of that, which is how to create a logical circuit from a Boolean expression or from an input-output table. Okay, so suppose you have an expression like, whoops, the negation of p and q or the negation of q. And let's construct a logical circuit for that. It's pretty straightforward. I mean, this is not really difficult at all. Okay. And this is how I would do it. I would say, let's look at this. Okay. We're going to want an AND gate. So let's start by drawing an AND gate. And what do we want feeding into that AND gate? Input Q and the negation of input P. Okay, so what I'm going to do then is just draw input Q going into that AND gate. And then I want the negation of P going into there. So what I do is I draw a NOT gate And then I send an input P through the NOT gate and then into the AND gate. And there we have everything that is circled in that red circle there. That is NOT P AND Q. Okay? Now I want the disjunction of that with the negation of Q. Okay, so that means we're going to want an OR gate. And what do we want feeding into that? We want this conjunction feeding into there. And then also we want the negation of Q. So I'm going to put a NOT gate And we're going to take off of Q. Remember, this is important. Now I want you, if you split a signal, I want you to put a dot where it's being split. Okay, and that's going to go off of there, through there. And there we go. And then there's your output. Okay, which we call what do you want to call it? We can call it R. Whoops. Okay. This is actually pretty straightforward. It's not difficult at all, but let's do one that's a little bit more complicated just to make sure we got the hang of it. Okay, let's do this Boolean expression. P and Q and R and S and T. So this is going to have several AND gates, right? How many AND gates? It's going to have, looks to me like, four of them, right? Okay, let's just do one at a time though. So let's do this. P and Q. Okay, so here's an AND gate. 
and we will feed into that inputs P and Q. Okay, and then here's a conjunction, R and S. So we're going to have an AND gate and feed into that inputs R and S. Okay, and then here we have the conjunction of those two that we just made. So in other words, we want to take those two that we just made and feed them both into an AND gate. All right, good. And then we want the conjunction of that whole thing with a new signal T. So we're going to have another AND gate. And what goes into there is the output from what we've made off so far, okay, plus a new input T. And then you have your final output and call it whatever you want. Let's call it maybe U. And there you go. Okay, so pretty straightforward. I don't think that's very difficult. Okay, but now what I want to do is show you how to create a logical circuit from an input output table. So let's do that. Okay, so I'm going to construct an input output table. Okay, let's look at that input output table and let's construct a logical circuit that matches that table. Okay, now here's the trick. Find every row where the output is turned on. So in other words, every row where the output has a one. Okay. And then write an AND gate that corresponds to that row. Or actually, let's do this. Write an expression using conjunction that represents that row. So what do I mean by that? Okay, here's an example. The first row, the output has a 1, correct? So what I'm going to do is I am going to write that row as S is the conjunction of P, Q, and R. You see, in order to get S turned on, I have to turn on P, Q, and R. So I'm going to write P and Q and R to match up with that row there. Okay. Now let's just go down to the next row where S has a 1, where the output is turned on. So there it is right there. Okay. Now, you see how P is a 1, Q is a 0, and R is a 1? And I want to write that as a conjunction of three things. And you might say, but only two of them are turned on. That's true. And the third one is what? Turned off. So I write that as P and not Q and R. Okay? See how that works? All right, let's go down. The output is on in this row. <coughs> and what is that? P and not Q and not R. Right? And then what you do after doing that, you ask yourself, so when is the output going to be on? 
the output is on if either of those three things happens, right? So in other words, our output is the disjunction of those three things, okay? So the expression for this table is P and Q and R or P and not Q and R or P and not Q and not R. And there you go. There's an expression for that table. And once you have an expression, then it's easy to make the circuit. Notice you need to use parentheses liberally. Okay? You leave the parentheses out, it's going to mean something different. So now let's make a circuit for that expression. And that expression came from the table, so that we will end up with a circuit for that table. Okay? So you want the conjunction of P, Q, and R. All right, that's pretty simple. We'll have P, Q, and R going into an AND gate. All right. And then we want the conjunction of P, the negation of Q, and R. So the conjunction of P the negation of Q. So I'm going to branch off of Q. And then have that go through a NOT gate. And as you can see, if you have the chance to plan ahead and make sure you give yourself enough room for these things, then it works out best. Okay, um, and we want R going through there, so we branch off of R. Okay, there we go. All right, now we want the conjunction of P, not Q, and not R. All right, so... We can fit that here. Now, where do I want to branch off again from P? You can do it just about anywhere. Personally, I think the, the best place that makes sense would be to go right here. Okay, and branch off from there. All right, that's P going in. Okay, then I want the negation of Q. So I can do this. <coughs> and when they do this example in the book, here's what they do. But I'm going to show you something that's actually a little easier. I can branch off of Q right there. and then send that through a NOT gate and into here. But there's an easier thing I can do. I already have NOT Q. NOT Q is this segment of wiring right there. So why don't I just branch off of there? Then I will not need a new NOT gate. Okay. This piece of wire right here is already the negation of Q. All right? 
and then we want the negation of R going into there. I don't have an R being negated anywhere yet, so I will need to make a NOT gate for that. So we'll put that here. And we'll go down here on R, R will go through there and into there. Okay, so that's my three conjunctions. Now what do I want to do with those three? I want the disjunctions of those three, so I'm going to make... I can do that all with one, or gate. Okay, and then I just send all three of those conjunctions through that disjunction. And that's S. That's your output. Okay, so the trick of doing this <coughs> is coming up with the expression from the table. And how do you do that? Find each row where the output is on and you write each of those rows as a conjunction of the three inputs or their negations. Okay? Now that will not necessarily give you the simplest circuit that matches the table, but it is guaranteed to give you one that works. Okay, we're going to do one more. This is probably going to end up being a short lecture. Okay, let's look at that input-output table. Let's write an expression that will match that. Okay, so from this row where the output is on, what should I write for that? I should write the conjunction P and Q, right? Where else is the output turned on? Right here. And how can I write that as a conjunction? P and not Q. Where else is the output on? Right here. And how can I write that as a conjunction? Not P and Q. And then what do I do? The disjunction of those three things. Okay, there we go. There's an expression for that table. Now let's write a circuit for that expression. Okay, so I have the conjunction of P and Q. All right, and then I want the conjunction of P with what? With not Q. Okay, and then the conjunction of Q with not P. So we'll take off of Q right here. And then we want uh, the negation of P to go through that, that gate also. So let's do this. Let's break off of P right here. And send that through a not gate. All 
Okay, and then what? The disjunction of those three conjunctions. And that's our output, which is labeled in the table as R. Okay, and there we go. Now, I want to show you that that is not necessarily the simplest circuit that would match that table. In fact, I believe that table could be represented by this circuit as well. Do you agree that that circuit also represents this table? Let's check and see. How would I check it? Well, look at that table, and the important thing is for you to notice that that table is equivalent to a truth table for P or Q. Let me show you. Okay, let's just make the truth table for P or Q. Remember, that is true as long as at least one of the two pieces is true. It is false if both pieces are false. Well, look at these tables. They're equivalent, aren't they? So this input-output table <coughs> for the circuit where the output is P and Q going through an OR gate is equivalent to this truth table for P or Q. Okay, let me back up and let me say that again a little bit differently. Let me say it this way. This input-output table is equivalent to the truth table for P or Q. And therefore, this input out table can be represented by the circuit where P and Q are going through an OR gate. Okay? I think that's a better way of saying it. So, <clears throat> this circuit and this circuit match the same input-output table. So that means that these two circuits are called equivalent circuits. They do the same thing. Okay? So now, if you are given an input-output table, my advice, if you want to make a circuit for the input-output table, my advice is to do it exactly the way we did. Take every row where the output is on and write each of those rows as a conjunction and then you do the disjunction of those conjunctions and then you write a circuit to match that. The reason why I suggest that you do it that way is because it's guaranteed to work properly every single time. 
It requires very little thought and very little creativity. It's just a routine process that's guaranteed to work. Okay? The only thing I'm saying here at the end is I'm just pointing out to you that that is not necessarily going to give you the simplest answer. There are possibly simpler circuits that would do the job. But the thing is, in order to figure out a simpler circuit, you have to be much more creative and put a lot more thought into it. Okay? All right, that's it for today.